Circus at the Arthur C. Clarke Awards and I am with the winner of the 2011 Arthur C. Clarke Awards for the novel Zoo City. How does it feel? I'm completely shocked. I'm in a state of shock. I'm overwhelmed. Are you really in a state of shock? I really Did you not am. expect I, it? I really didn't. I completely thought that Ian McDonald would take it. The Dervish House is such an Everybody novel. keeps saying that to me. Ian McDonald, Ian McDonald. I Why? think there's going to be a lot of controversy. There's going to be a whole backlash. People are going to be out to kill me. It's going to be ugly. Why do you think you got it? I think because it's about something different that we haven't seen before you know I mean like Ian McDonald does an amazing job where he actually travels to these incredible places and he writes so authentically you think that he's lived there for like his entire life but I mean I have lived in Johannesburg I grew up in Johannesburg and um, you know the strange kind of contrast between the developing world and the developed world South Africa is at once first world and third world. It's this crazy place. Mm. People really do believe in magic, but at the same time, technology is transforming the country in ways that are completely different to the way it's working in the UK and the US. So it's just it's this incredibly exciting space. It's really it's amazing. It's an amazing place to live and it's an amazing place to write about, but it's also quite troubling. But I try to bring some of that into okay, the novel. Well, well, let's take it back a step. Um, for people who have never heard of you and never heard of the book, what's it about? Why should they read it? That's a really horrible question. <laughs> yes, it, yes it is, and I'm proud of it. Um, it's about, it's really about guilt and the possibility of redemption. Um, it's about... Uh, Did you have a Catholic upbringing? No, I didn't. Okay. No. <laughs> um, it's, it's about people who have criminals, who have magical animals. So if you commit a terrible crime, you're a burden with a magical animal. And it might be the possibility of redemption or it might be further condemnation. Um, it might be the, like the devil on your shoulder or the, the guardian angel looking after you. No one really quite knows what they are. Um, it's set in Hillbrow, which is an amazing part of inner city Johannesburg, real kind of slums, uh, people squatting in like these deserted tenement buildings. Um, and I think people have really responded to Johannesburg as a as a very interesting location. You know, it's not LA, it's not Tokyo, it's not London. It's it's a very different space. I, I felt like I did, and it, it, it's probably something you're probably better preparing, but I felt the same way I did when I watched District 13. Nine, simply, District Nine. Not, blimey, where did 13 come from? But simply because it was a different cadence, it was a different tone, it was a different rhythm. Was that deliberate or was that just an expression of what you know? It's an expression of what I know. I live, I grew up in Johannesburg, I live in Cape Town now. It was all the things that I was interested in, from refugees living in Hillbrow through to, um, you know, this, this kind of shadow of crime that we live with in South Africa all the time. And, and trying to kind of humanize and find that human story behind this. Um, and I actually spent several days in Hillbrow. I went around with a fixer and um, just walking around, just talking to people, just trying to find like the real stories. And that was amazing. I, I've got a background as a journalist, but this was the first time I had my own brief. I was setting my brief and that was amazing. So literally- But, but, but where did it come from? I mean, you talked about the whole thing about guilt. Where, where does that come from? What's the roots of that? I think ideas for me developed like a Polaroid in the back of my head, you know, I kind of get a snapshot of an image and I had this image of a girl shrugging a sloth onto her shoulders and I knew that it was a burden but also a possibility and I knew that she would have this run in with these, this, this pair, the, the Marabou and the Maltese Fantastic. and uh, it just grew from there, you know, it kind of grows, it grows into focus the more I kind of concentrate on it and kind of try and tease it out. Um, okay. Um, I have a big thing about race in literature, and the thing is this, that people assume a default, and the default is usually white, and you can tell this because the only time they mention colour is if it's a black guy, and, I, and so many books, it's like, I got in the cab, and the black cab driver was so-and-so. With your book, it, it uh, entered a very rare genre for me, which is those books which you were never sure. Was that a deliberate attempt on your part? I think it was deliberate. I've had, I've had flack from people saying, why isn't race a big issue? But you know what, living in South Africa, race is an issue, but it's not something that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I think, I think it's much more a class issue. You know, it's like lower class versus middle class versus upper class. And um, we have a much bigger black middle class than we ever had before during apartheid. Um, and I think that's really, really interesting. And I think that the class differences, you know, as, as urbanites, we are basically on the same page. 
Um, but Zing, Zing Zing is black, isn't Zing she? Zing Zing is black. So how do you as a white woman capture the voice of a black woman? I was really worried about it, you know, and I actually, I, I employed um, a culture editor called uh, Zuki Wana. She's an amazing South African novelist, and she's a friend of mine. And I said to Zuki, I was like, listen, could you like check it out and make sure that, you know, everything's okay? And she read it and she gave me lots of notes about Johannesburg, but she didn't answer my most pressing question. I was like, is Zinzi black enough? And she laughed at me. She was like, what is black enough? She's a person. Yeah, no, totally. she's a person. And is she the most full character? You know, she was like, why are you asking if she's black enough? You should be asking if she's Zinzi enough. You know, right, because, right. you know, we, 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 we play the stereotypes and it's bullshit. You know, like we should, it's, we should be creating like fully developed people. Um, yeah, there, there are ideas about like what women are, what men are, and you know, we're all different, and it's crazy. And I get very frustrated with writers who don't want to write outside their exact experience. You know, oh, I'm a white male writer, I can't write a female, or I can't write a black character, or I can't write a gay character. And it's just, it's crap. You do it the same way you do anything else. You do it with integrity, and you do it with research, and research is both reading stuff and talking to people, and running it past people. Um, and you, you just try and create the best character you can and a fully developed person. At Geek Syndicate, we're a very ground roots type of organisation. So my question is, what piece of advice do you have for writers starting out? Stop polishing the first three chapters and finish the damn book. <laughs> you say that with feeling and experience. I spent four years writing Moxie Land because I messed around so much. Um, I mean, I did other things in between. I wrote non-fiction, I launched it. Actually, non -fiction. So, sorry to derail you. No, but, totally. Um, I mean, what, what your publisher did, which I thought was wonderful, was did a competition with people writing a short story based on your work. How does that feel? It's so cool. It is so amazing to have other people buy into your idea and contribute to the world. It's incredible. I mean, I did the same. I've got soundtracks for both books. Oh, okay. <laughs> You've got a soundtrack. What's that about? I, I just wanted a soundtrack, so I approached African Dope, which is one of the best, um, I think they're kind of the signature sound of Cape Town, they're like a really amazing independent record label, I guess like Ninja Tune, and um, I, I approached them and I said, look, I want to do a soundtrack for Moxila, and they were like, okay, and I was like, really? That's amazing, and, and they did it, and, and they threw open their entire catalogue, and I chose the tracks with the Honey Bee, who's like one of their producers. And it was amazing to actually produce the soundtrack. And they did the same for Zoo City, but it was a much more Joburg sound. So we worked with some Joburg record labels as well. And it's just amazing to see what other people do with your ideas. And I think that's so exciting to, you know, I love fan fiction. You know, to see other people play in this world that you've created, it is, it's amazing. It's such an honor. It's incredible. You know, the people like buy into an idea so much and they love it so much. They want to make their own contribution. It's awesome. Okay, so you've won an award, a prestigious award for your work. Um, there's pressure now. How do? What's next for you? How do you deal with the pressure of creating a work after winning an, winning an award? Pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't really feel real. So um, I don't know. It's. Uh, I'm already. I'm already working on my new novel. I've got the ideas for the next three novels. Um, again, kind of developing like 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 Polaroids in my hind brain. Um, and it's just kind of focusing on them and knowing what to do with them. But but it is this incredible pressure. You know, you've got to suddenly live up to something, um, and it's kind of scary. It's kind of terrifying, actually. Lauren, thank you so much for your time, thank you. and congratulations. Thanks.